It's a Tuesday morning. You're watching New Day. My name is Anthony Jackson. Let's do some news for this morning. Now, new governing council for the University of Science and Technology to be reconstituted on Friday, November 2, for academic work to resume on November 8. <music> Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Uso, defends decision to contract his hotel for a luncheon. Youth groups give Ghana Highway Authority and the Sector Ministry up to November 12 to complete footbridges on the Medina Adenta Agri Highway. On the foreign front, Indonesia hunts for victims of wreckage of an air crash. Survivors seem unlikely. Let's start off with some education stories where the new governing council for the University of Science and Technology is to be reconstituted on Friday, November 2, for academic work to resume on November 8. These were made known after a crunch meeting in Accra between government and the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAC. The three-hour meeting between government and UTAC was held behind closed doors. After deliberations with the leadership of UTAC, government has directed that a new governing council be constituted by Friday, November 2, while investigations into the incidents on campus are carried out. Council is expected to be reconstituted by Friday, November 2, 2018. The reconstituted council will then take over from the interim governing council. UTAC has undertaken to restore services, cooperate in resolution efforts, and encourage other stakeholders to join resolution efforts. In accordance with the earlier directive by the President of the Republic, the university is expected to reopen by November 8, 2018 for normal academic work to resume. National President of UTAC, Dr. Rikopoku, praised government for agreeing to reconstitute the Council of KNUST. We support it and we are going to abide by it to make sure that law and order is restored on KNUST campus and our dear students return back for us to do what we love to do best. We're hoping that all arrangements being put in place to make sure the council is reconstituted, vice chancellor restored, all of it would work accordingly, according to the timetable. He pledged strong commitment to ensure internal problems are resolved amicably. On Monday, October 22, students of the university embarked on a demonstration which turned violent, leading to the destruction of property. Now, the minority in Parliament demanded for the dismissal of the Education Minister and a Minister of State responsible for tertiary education. As at a news conference in Accra, the minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, says the two who have shown their support publicly for the Vice Chancellor and the dissolved council of the KNUST must also take responsibility for the incidents at the university. It must be emphasized that we would not accept the erosion and respect to the rule of law and this possible substitution for the rule of the rule. We are a country governed by law, a country governed by a constitution which provides in Article 21 and 70 provisions that protect the academic freedom of our tertiary institutions. And in particular, Act 5, for Act 454 of 1993, the National Council for Tertiary Education, you can see a government in a hurry, in a hurry to dissolve council without recourse to due process. We submit strongly that the whole impasse, which has now spiraled out of control, is a mark of failure of leadership by government and the reflection of their super incompetence characterized by rule of the rule. We are in government, we are in power, we will do as it pleases when they should be respecting 
uh, the laws and due process. Now, meanwhile, the Asante Hino Tunford Osei to the second has held a closed-door meeting with various interest groups at the Minshia Palace in Kumasi over the students' violent protests and the university's management impasse. The Asante Hine Otunfo Seitu II, who is Chancellor of the University, was out of the country during the students' protest, which resulted in the vandalism of property on campus. The Asante Regional Security Council closed down the university indefinitely until government last Thursday announced the dissolution of the university's governing council and the reconstitution of an interim council. Government's decision has been resisted by various interest groups on campus, including the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAC, the Teachers and Education Workers Union, TEU, the Ghana Association of University Administrators, GAWA, and the Federation of University Senior Staff Association of Ghana, FUSAC. These groups insist the acts and statutes of the university provide adequate mechanisms in resolving the impasse and want the dissolved council reinstated. Representatives of all these groups, as well as the management and students' representative council of the university, met with the Chancellor Otunfo Seitu in a closed door meeting at the Mensha Palace on Monday. Tewu chair the KNUS teachers, Arthur, who was at the meeting, spoke to TV3. Chancellor said that um, the, the, the government can withdraw its members being the four and then replace them. And then he is ready, he is prepared to, 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 to allow that and, and then he will inaugurate them either Friday or before Friday so that that council can go ahead. By this, the vice chancellor will have to go ahead doing his work. Now, still on issues surrounding KNUSD, the University Student Association of Ghana, USAC, has expressed disappointment over the strike by the University Teachers Association of Ghana, describing the action as unfortunate. The student body, out the view, the action taken by the KNUSD chapter of UTAC is illegal and demanded they return to work. USA questioned the legality of the strike by the University Teachers Association of Ghana and expressed surprise the lecturers never responded to the brutalities meted out to some students on the KNUST campus. USA is saddened and disappointed by the strike action threatened undertaken by the KNUST University Teachers Association of Ghana. Where was Utah KNUST chapter when students consistently complained bitterly about brutality by security personnel and other inhuman treatment in the school. The students expressed their support for the Interim Management Council and urged members to execute their mandate to get the academic work back on track in the university. They stated the students will comply with any outcome of the council even if they are asked to pay for the damage caused on campus. If management at the end of the day comes out and say that um, um, the destruction of the properties should be borne by students um, uh, because, uh, I mean, largely everything should be placed around our doorstep. We'll be ready to pay. But we are also saying that if the interim council comes up with a resolution that all these things happened because of the, because of the one lack of show of leadership on the part of the management, we are saying that the management should take full responsibility of saying. The student body said it is erroneous for the media and public to attribute the cause of the demonstration to the conversion of single-sex halls to mixed halls when it was rather the brutalities meted out to some students. KNUST, let's move on to one of our headline stories where the Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Usu, says that the decision to contract his hotel for a luncheon had the board's approval. A leaked memo last week showed the authority had paid 10,652 CDs to the hotel for lunch for eight people. A spirited defense, Ghana Maritime Authority offered the leaked memo that went viral last week content of the memo was defended by management of the authority except a quick dismissal of portions they say were doctored. The director general who had not been in the country was contacted after management released the memo. He blamed some people within and outside authority who were bent on seeing him fail. 
on claims of conflict of interest position in the award of the lunch contract to his hotel lax suit executive hotel. Kwame also says it was purely a board decision and cannot constitute a conflict of interest. He will, however, not respond to further questions except to say the authority will hold a news conference with a full complement of the board to address the issues. The Ministry of Transport has waded into the controversies at the Ghana Maritime Authority. A statement issued and signed by the Minister of Transport has directed the board of the authority to investigate happenings at the authority. The same board, the Director General says, gave approval for the deluxe executive hotel which he owns to supply lunch for members of the authority and stakeholders. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Accra. Now, a youth group calling itself Fix Our Foot Bridges now has given the Ghana Highway Authority and the Sector Ministry up to November 12 to complete foot bridges on the Medina Adenta Ebri Highway or risk a protest. The seven pedestrian foot bridges were part of the Tisekwashi Manfi Highway project, which was open to traffic in 2013. An estimated 200 lives have been lost on the stretch through motor accidents. The Ghana Highway Authority promised to get the foot bridges completed by the end of October. Executive member of Fix Our Bridges Now, Richmond Kwesi Aguia, expressed the frustration of residents in communities along the highway. If we scream, then our shout is not enough to be heard. I mean, then we, we are joking. So we just pleading on the higher authorities to come to our aid. Nobody wants to be in the sand demonstration nor anything. But I think that they should, be, they should know that we would actually escalate our grievances if nothing is done. It's not a threat. It's a simple message. Assemblyman for Adenta West Rashid Osebunsu expressed disappointment over lack of feedback from people responsible for the completion of the footbridges. We have been able to get to every important individual who has relation to work on that bridge. Nothing has been, nobody has communicated to this. Government has the capability. Maybe we have not been loud enough. So I'm entreating all residents of Madina, Denta, Pantai, Oyarefa, everybody who uses the highway, that is the Bri Madina Highway, to join us on the 12th of November, whilst we move. This is an action for all. November now, or never. MC of Lang Kwantanai Medina Municipality, Jennifer Dede Ajabin, assured them of the completion of the footbridges. October is not over technically for me because now I can start agitating after October. What if I start today and tomorrow I see some works? So I am also waiting patiently. But I believe that with the assurances that we've been given, even if nothing has started, we will go back and get information on why the foot bridges or no work has been seen as commencing yet. Foot bridges must be seen as a road safety issue rather than just courage for pedestrians. Now, the Institute of Chartered Economics, Ghana, wants governments to allocate adequate resources through the 2019 budget to implement the One District, One Warehouse initiative. According to the Institute, the intervention provides the hinge for the country's attempt to modernize agriculture and industrialize. Well, let's do some international news now. Indonesia on Tuesday stepped up a search for an airliner that plunged into the sea with all 189 aboard feared dead, deploying underwater beacons to trace its black box recorders and uncover why an almost new plane crashed minutes after takeoff. Indonesia, one of the world's fastest growing aviation markets, has a patchy safety record with a now almost certain prospect of all on board having died. The crash is set to rank as the country's second worst disaster. But well, that's it for the news for this morning. You will return shortly after the break. Uh, yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, our message to you this morning is simple. Uh, well, Peter slept in the in the prison. Uh -huh. Daniel slept in the in the lion's den. Jesus slept in a storm. 
it only says one thing if you have God like we do you are, you're cool you can yeah. take a rest and so, yeah, take a rest man <laughs> whatever it is that you're going through take a rest that's all yeah, we want take a rest thing. but don't be lazy no, make no, sure don't you be lazy. be no, productive no, as you take a rest and rest in God's peace this, that's certainly this is the message you're sending across this snoring <laughs> rest no 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 don't go and be snoring no no Take a rest, like mm -hmm. take a chill pill yeah. and know that God's got your back. But it's important, you know, to take a chill pill because, Johnny, sometimes we worry too much in the sense that worrying doesn't really change anything. It just makes you depressed and yeah. worry more. It's mm -hmm. a cycle. And, I mean, in times where many people are dying, young people are dying from strokes, hypertension, diabetes, I feel it's the stress we put upon ourselves. I mean, relax. At the end of the day, if you've got business, make sure you're planning well. Execute whatever tasks you have to do. Make sure you're doing it in the right time and leave the rest to God. After all, I mean, we're on this earth, we'll pass through, but we'll <laughs> certainly fade away exactly. so do your best certainly give off your best but leave the rest to god to handle after you've done that absolutely so it's tuesday and mm -hmm. we're here to give you a full pack of your favorite breakfast yep. show here on television uh this is new day on tv3 we're across the world on uh, facebook and on youtube and on twitter and everywhere else mm. and here in ghana if you have a whatsapp line you can share your thoughts and comments with us zero two zero two one six 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 Three three. That's zero two zero two one six 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 three three. All your thoughts and comments. Hmm. Welcome on the show. We're ranting yep. uh, later. Uh, what we're are we talking about here in USD and the impasse and many things that have happened afterwards. And we'll find out what people's views are. But Johnny, today we have Chamber because it's uh, Tuesday uh, and uh, we go uh, legal. Uh, uh, we'll be talking about litigation issues. Uh -huh. Everyone in Ghana has had an encounter with that issue or close to someone who has had litigation issues over land. And so we'll be finding out exactly what the law says, how to go about with the law when you have land guards on your land, what to do, who's the rightful owner, what papers or titles do you need to say you are the owner of the land we'll be talking about that on chambers it's essentially today. we'll be asking what does the law say exactly if you found yourself in a situation what does the law say mm -hmm. so you don't get to take the law into your own hands and then you end up on the wrong side of, of the, law. the law you know because sometimes i mean you may have a piece of land mm -hmm. somebody's encroaching on it uh you're watching and you don't know what to do right the person is done building and you go and pick up your your masons, whatever it is, they raise it down. You go to the police station, and the police said, did we send you to exactly. go and do this? Why you didn't, didn't you report to us? Exactly. So what does the law say? That's mm -hmm. the question we'll be answering today. Then we'll also do Earth. fix it. Johnny, you know how many people own vehicles, but they don't know how to handle anything about Even bicycles. It. Exactly. Bicycles, motorbikes, whatever <laughs> automobile you have, we'll talk about what little things you can do okay. so that you can certainly fix it. You don't need to go to the mechanic. But that doesn't mean we'll be running the mechanics out of work, right. they certainly will still have the bigger jobs to do. Well, I don't think that the doctors are run out of work or they are chased out of work mm. if people are taught to do first aid. You, you have been coaching people to, mm -hmm. to learn to do first aid. It makes aid. the work easier. Exactly. Actually. So and it's it all about, about yes. you know, outsmarting or outrunning the the mechanics. But I feel sometimes, I think it's become a Ghanaian thing, <laughs> where when you take your vehicle to the mechanics and you're not careful, it comes back with more issues than you actually sent it. People are of the view that they spoil something so that you can come back somebody, so they keep somebody working. Somebody told me, my dad told me, my late father told me that if you take your car to your mechanic and you tell him your brake is not working, hmm. he will fix the brake but he will mess the up the clutch. Or something yeah. else. I know. So if you go Why next do time, do he will fix the clutch <laughs> and, and, and take off the headlights. Then you keep coming back. So there has to be a retainer. Oh, you know? Lord. It has to be. The mechanics cool. should learn. I mean, the, to this morning we are talking to you. I hope you change. Because there's no change warranty, essentially. If you take it to uh, a standardized automobile shop, yeah. you know, and they, it has a problem, mm -hmm. you can go. Same applies to phone repairs. Right. If you take your phone to, say, a Samsung <laughs> shop and they fix it and you have a problem, you just take it back right. and say, look, I came here two days mm -hmm. ago. This is it. They pick it over. Oh, sorry. They'll fix it. If you take it to a wayside person, and this is not to price them out, mm. say, well, madam, so we'll buy him, him out. Yeah. Did it not work? <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so, so we just have to get anyway, it right. Let's but check I mean, out that all is corruption, mm. really. Yeah, yeah, it's no, bribery and corruption on a small scale. Oh, it's no, just that it's going to become the government kind of way we talk about. Scheme. Those are Ponzi <laughs> schemes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's time for us to touch on newspaper headlines now, Johnny. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, and Johnny then, is destroying things yeah, here in the studio. It's okay. One on one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the daily graphic is uh, as well the uh, the very first one we start with as usual. Dissolution of KNUSD Council Chancellor to set up new body uh, Friday and blame SHS heads for lack of supplies for uh, free SHS Secretariat. 
and uh, UN supports Ghana with $441.6 million to tackle development challenges. Professor Jamba for there holding up uh, what looks like an MOU signed uh, with the U.S. there. The Daily Guide says men's gold tangles with customers, vote buying rocks NDC polls, and ND minister probes GMA's uh, 135K food. There's been a strict or strong a stiff defense in that direction. Komala Kuchi has all the story. And KNUSC crisis deepens. So two four steps in um, VC reinstated. Okay, Otumfo is 82 stepped in. The Finder newspaper says the KNUS is saga. Otumfo is the savior. Tax to reconstitute council by Friday. Of course, Otumfo promised that once he stepped back into the jurisdiction, he was going to enforce that. And here we have some good news there. RFTI bill, media practitioners take on parliament. We're gathering in the gallery of parliament today to press home uh, our demands. And uh, Asamwajan in messy divorce. Disregard purported transport fare increases, according to the GPRT. And government should avoid interfering with administration of universities. Minority leader Haruna Idrisu says so. Uh, that we'll move on to our next paper, which is the Ghanaian Times. It says, Minister orders investigations into GMA activities and partner government to deliver communities. Vice President, head teacher defiles girl 11. Again, oh no. Update on KNUST impasse. New governing council to be reconstituted. Varsity reopens on November 8th and UTAG suspends strike. That's what you have there. Uh, the front page. The Today newspaper, Mahama Goes Wild, says MPP's hypocrisy is annoying. And group Indum consolidates for continuity. Indum still in charge. And government courts Otumfo to help resolve KNUST on pass. Government is caught in Otumfo's uh, cooperation there. And that's about the last one there on your television screens. Interesting happenings at the KNUST. Mm. I understand that the senior staff have uh, extended their strike action. Was that it? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I've, I've had my reservations about this OKNUST thing. I've been mm. asking questions. Um, the vice chancellor doesn't take the decisions on his own. Right. He takes it with the council right. or, you know, bear the decision of the council. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever is happening now regarding the swapping of male halls to become mixed halls, everybody seems to be pointing fingers at the vice chancellor or the ex-vice chancellor, whatever it is that you'd <laughs> want to call him. And nobody seems to be asking questions of the council. Hmm. Nobody, nobody seems to be asking questions of the council. I don't right. know. Right. I, I'm, I, I really am in a fix as to what exactly we want to achieve with this. Mm. I certainly can hear the minority loud and clear saying that government shouldn't interfere. Wow. But clearly, I think at this point, we needed some government interference to be able to regulate how this thing should go. Mm. Maybe the decisions that government took in whole may not be the right ones totally. And that's what maybe minority would also be suggesting. However, on the flip side... This governing council, interim governing council, then dissolve it after two, almost just two <laughs> days of work yeah. to come and reconstitute another governing council. I think that's where it didn't work yeah. out. And I, I feel when these issues happen, we should take our time. The certain, like you said, have been consultations. Yeah. The vice chancellor doesn't act on his own. He's got a chancellor, there's a council, and on the council are representatives of other unions. Yeah. And so these things, we shouldn't, ultimately, maybe someone will say he's the administrator, so he oh, executes but, but the, the, the job, even though it's coming yeah. from a board. Right. Yes, but he's only the face to many decisions that have been taken in the yeah, background. Exactly. And so I think we should move away from the VC. Besides, he's human. He's bound to err. Uh, and if things, his, I mean, decisions that he came to only voice out are not the decisions of the council as a whole, then it's just up to them to sit down and say, okay, we think this didn't turn out the way we had anticipated. Let's come back to the drawing table and change a few strategies. Mm. I am not too happy with this pointing fingers at the VC as if he did everything on his own. Mm. He is only a face for the many, many, Absolutely. many people in the background and the decisions they take. So moving forward, I don't think the VC needs to step down. Besides, with the interim governing council that was constituted, mm. I never heard them say the VC has been sagged. He still is the vice chancellor. And yeah. I mean, if he's going to be there and there's a council that he's still going to report to, then really, he's still working. So if he's going to stay, mm -hmm. let's make sure that he can just change some of the reforms that they sought to bring to the right. table. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the students now understand or they can both.
both come to a conclusion that is amicable for both parties and right. we move on I, I think that my 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 uh, earlier advice to the student body hmm. and uh, all those agitating for right. the VC to go is that look the council is constituted of many parts the SRC is part mm -hmm. the alumni wh which went to court is, yep. is part uh, you have the You've teachers had, association mm -hmm. Every, everybody is in mm -hmm. there you have uh, convocation groups in there mm -hmm. as well so it's a full house Dude. now I this is my advice again to the students of the KNUSD and those who are leading a charge in this direction that don't allow the politician whether it is NDC or MPP unless they are official government you know uh, giving a directive from a ministry right. which is cogent but if you allow people to put a political twist to the issues mm -hmm. that are happening, mm -hmm. the school will reopen and you will still have the problems the there because the people ground. are trying to cash in politically. Mm -hmm. That's what is happening. And, and if, you take, if, if you don't take a clear cue from it, you will end up having screamed, having done everything you want mm -hmm. to do, you come back to square one. Yep. And that's not what anybody wants. So when you go to the table, uh, perhaps you don't want to shut your ears to everything out there. You have the demands that you're making. Your demands are clear that you don't want to be treated like secondary school children. Right. You don't want to be whipped. You don't want to uh, also be closed at 10. Mm -hmm. These are the issues yeah. that you are asking for. And ask and for that. And they're legitimate. So, ask, they should stick so to it. ask for that. Don't, mm -hmm. don't be dropping in political undertones. It will help you. It but will never help you. You know, <laughs> I mean, at the end of this, what the student bodies also have to recognize is that there's gradually been the creeping in of politics into the student bodies, which will eventually cripple them. Oh, they will no longer it, have a voice it's, because it's now when they speak, it has. But oh. I mean, Johnny, I think they haven't realized to which extent it has, you know, degraded the student activism. Because when it comes to elections and governing, I mean, students had a voice. When a student union spoke in those days, it was... Virtually, Look, I when, mean, when they had power. When, when but now, because they've got faces to it, mm. now is MPP or NDC or some political party Look, funding a particular when I, when leader? I, when how when is I was a leader of the Greater Accra Students Representative Council, I was part of the leadership and a uh, very active one at that, mm. which by extension was Nukes as well. Later, we got into Nukes. Right. When Nukes spoke, the government shook. Yeah. Today, it's not like that. Even the Nukes that are supposed to be championing some of these things are, is divided. Yeah. You know, because we you've have got the MPP two or faction, three, NDC, two or three separate nukes presidents speaking it, at it different times. Gel. It doesn't add up. Mm. So you don't have a united front one. The politician knows that once they step in and they drop a few bucks, you will, you will bow to their dictates and take mm. certain decisions. Why would they want to mm -hmm. play by your rules? They will still keep you like, you know, a pawn and, and, yeah. and be moving you around. So and that's not good. Yeah. That I hope all the student good. unions actually pick a cue from this KNUSD saga because we wouldn't want it to end and not have gained anything out of it. Both parties stand to, you know, gain something and they should make sure the student body does exactly that. But RTI bill is back in the news yeah. and media practitioners are taking on parliament, which is very important, Johnny. It's become a cliche where we talk about RTI bill and it's as if it will never be passed in our lifetime. Yeah. But really, it must, be. it must be. And government promised us. So we have to make sure that well, we take keep yeah, them yes, on yes, their toes. Yesterday when uh, Senior Elvis Daku, good morning mm. to you, Senior Elvis Daku, we're, we're meeting at the Gallery of Parliament today to, to press yeah. on these uh, demands. So there have been a lot of campaign about it. And yesterday, I like what he said. He, he said there's been a certain level of dishonesty mm -hmm. on the part of our lawmakers right. and the persons who promised us that this will be done. That's level of dishonest mm -hmm. because, you know, you promise you one thing the, and the, the timeline mm -hmm. comes up, it you elapses, you don't say anything, you pretend as if nothing is mm -hmm. happening, then we start the clock, we rewind the clock and start again, and then we go on. That's dishonesty right. in the strict sense of the it word. Is. The question is, why are we adamant on wanting to pass the right to information bill or law when, in fact, we do know that if Mr. Martin Amidu will get a, f a full chance to operate. Hmm. He would need the right to information law to, to operate. Work. If you want me to walk up to him with detail, with information, and I don't have access to that information, hmm. how do I go and help Mr. Martin I to do no his idea. work? How do I go and help him? Hmm. How do I ask for accountability hmm. from government? Hmm. How do I know what my rights and responsibilities are ah. to be able to question what spending is made on my behalf? Hmm. How do I know? And if you, the citizenry has information and they are very well placed as in, in, within the information domain, mm -hmm. they can ask the right questions. 
of their leaders so that if somebody has all the information, they would walk up to their MP to get them to go and fix the road. Right. And when the MP mounts the platform to say, oh, when you elect me, I'll fix your road, they would boldly tell him, Masa, you are telling lies. Mm -hmm. Because when you win power, you are the same person who will come back and say, oh, you are not, uh, you are only a change agent, right. but you don't construct roads. So if the people have the right information, mm -hmm. We would be going round and round in, in circles, circles talking about about uh, some of these but things. But probably that's why they don't want to pass it because we, they, we oh, like they, to oh, go they, in circles. Oh, they will pass it. Yes. They will pass They it. like I they, mean, they to go in circles it. and so they'll get all of us running they, around and forget the main issues. They, they will But pass you know, Johnny, we mentioned something. Utah has suspended the strike okay. following the meeting with um, the minister designate for information. Right. Yesterday they said they have suspended that's, it that's because they're going to help. That's Association. Yes. The they senior, have senior staff. They seem to have extended. Exactly. But then they actually are still part of UTAG. So there's even a confusion as to <laughs> why you would, you know, be in one voice saying you're fully in support of what right. UTAG is doing, mm. but then in another voice also take come out of yourselves and say, we don't and we're extending our strike. There's a whole it lot of just, confusion. It's just like saying that, that you are uh, you're part of the GJ and yeah. then you break out and say, oh, you are TV Presenters Association. <laughs> say, oh, we, we don't support what is happening. It anyway. doesn't But, but uh, interesting story, page six of the... Uh, daily guide. Mm. Uh, it talks about men's gold tangos with uh, customers. customers right. they, there was an initial uh, press release mm -hmm. I read from my good friend Niyama Matefi, who's now acting week. as. Uh, yes, and he says that men's gold could resume. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the word is cold. Cold resume on November 5, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Cold means that there's may a possible probability. Yes. May or may not. And I'm wondering why cold? I'm sure they're still in talks with SEC and Bank of Ghana. And so maybe it's not a concrete thing, but they're giving their customers the hope that there oh. probably would be. And if, if in that same, you know, communique, there was yeah. some talk about having um, discussions with your people right. where they'll open a platform for those interactions <coughs> as to where you want your money. To be. So we certainly are looking forward to November hasn't come yet. So let's yeah. wait. November 5 will certainly come, November. and then we'll find out. Yes. Okay. The last time I... <laughs> if I, it was could the or last time, The last time there was September 28th, and I was asking about it, I was called <laughs> a never hater. Came. I was yep. called a hater. Somebody says, well, I'm waiting for November 10th, uh, September 28th. Anyway. But mm. then uh, today is the 29th, no, 30th, 30th. of October. So we've got one it? more, yeah. Now, uh, good morning, special one. This is to <laughs> the office of the vice president and to Honorable Boniface Abubakar mm. Sadiq. You sat on this platform with us and you promised us that in the month of October, the contractor will move on to site on the Medina Adenta Highway. I have the tape. I have the video clip. You promised us here. And today is the 30th. There's been no sign, no sign, not one trip of sand, not a single machine, not even a small tie, nothing on that full stretch on the Medina Dental Ibri Highway. Nothing at all. Today is the 30th of October. Sir, good morning to you, Alaji. What's happening? Uh, what's holding you? Can we know, can we have a conversation? Hmm. Last Friday, we tried to call you on Community Connect and uh, my producer, Richard Brightado, said your phone was off. Uh, we're wondering what, what's happening. So, uh, sir, we are friends. If you have information as to why this is not happening, because you promised us that you had spoken with the ministry mm -hmm. and they had given you the green light that it was going to start in October. 30th October it is. Last Sunday, the people of Medina Adenta had uh, a press conference. They are pressing down. They are threatening by November 12th, they will hit the streets. What is happening, sir? Good morning to you. But anyway, let's also take a break at this point. We'll be back with more here on Day. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, Vodafone is asking you to make the smartest choice for your business right now. Go for smart business from Vodafone and experience real flexibility, convenience, and productivity. Smart business from Vodafone allows you to create your own customized data voice plan to suit the unique requirements of your business. So, whether it's the airtime for your workers to make those critical calls or data packages for email and digital marketing, they've got you covered. Also, you get a chance to roll on or over your and use data to save some cash for your business. Move your business into the future with Vodafone Smart Business. Call them on 0302 334 040. That's 0302 334 040 or 0800 10,000. That's 0800 
10,000 or visit www.vodafone.com.gh slash business slash smart business to build your own plan. Vodafone says the future is exciting. Question is, are you ready? Of course, we are ready. Yep, we certainly are ready and we've joined. And so make sure you get the opportunity. They're giving you the smart business opportunity. Make sure you grab onto it. But it's time for us to step out there and rant about the KNUSD impasse and government stepping in. Do you agree with the decisions government has taken? Are you happy with them? Do you think we could have done something different? Let's step out and find out. Government is requesting from the Asantehene Otumfo Osei Tutu II, who is also the Chancellor of the embattled Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, to lead in the next steps at reconstituting the Governing Council of the University. The reconstitution we are learning will happen on November 2nd. Now, the reconstitution and the involvement of the king, Otumfo Osei Tutu II, obviously is aimed at ensuring that peace prevails at the embattled university. This morning on Daily Rant with me, Eric Yoeje, we want to find out what you make of the involvement of the king, Otumfo Osei to the second, and also your expectations of the governing council that is to be reconstituted. This is the Daily Rant. Let's keep talking. In your baby, I was school where I came to UST. See, I see, but now I can see, 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 yeah. And sha a seminar can say that way, says the engineer and so on, and she be just a seminar to all. And to me, see, see, a bino, a day to me, number or two for say, or no share now, more cons do come to be on me, she say, a seminar problem, you see, no more, you know, my find out, no more days, a solution, a ba, not sad, you way, NCB, you know. I think it's the best way because at the end of the day, obey to your school fees. And to you, and to me, and banner to say, a problem, can crave you be ba, ama, and nunti student, but what could you for man. So, yeah, Kada, yeah, grade are burning in conflict management. The government F it has failed in two major issues, sir. Well, but the first case, typical case is in uh, some also GFA. Second one, you them KNUS in some. A ban will fail. Yeah, they be a make a day. Yanko Ponache in Azi. There is a kingdom of Wagana, one eminent chief in Obi Biara Wagana, irrespective of the tribe, irrespective of the, the, uh, the religious background. What will you say? The boost from Kubi de Maas and Tehini. It is Sabi Sabi, he is the chancellor of the university. He is a fortunate situation there. It happened in his own backyard. It is Sabi Sabi, you are Benny, not on you, not Jinibi, on you, motiva. And from day one, nobody gets himself or Santini involved. Under the doorstep of the Asantehini, we have been confronted with this case. I think that the first thing we would have done was to seek his wise counsel, not to drag ourselves in the court of public opinion. And because of what people have said, we have reverted back to him to say he should lead it. And even just look at asking him to lead it, we are told about the reopening date immediately. And that settles this problem first. And I think that this is what we should have started. Let's look at the involvement of the Asante Hine. How critical will his role be in ensuring that sanity prevails? The way CBRA will be, but Papa no Abem Asante in Abem, I think this issue will be resolved immediately because yeah, in some way you drew in them, in some way you saw you drew in them, you know, prepared the Nibem or the Nenyimibem, Nenyim Nusronko, Nenyan say or Odubu Numan, Asante Mano, and I make a a shas narano, Saban got him involved, and Kayan do baby away, but better late than ever. Why be minute? I think he will use his wise counsel to resolve this impasse. A samu ba, a binon so so, as I say, own take some immediate measures, even making sure he had a bit calm on a samu down. And to know a binon in his own wisdom, he said, No, in any many, I ain't some interim committee. What's that, Dad? You know, we should involve the Otun for. And the UTAG and all those associations. Now, some you see, so too for no to Kono Hade. Why is it that say, one Kono Hade? A bino in his own wisdom, no. A semi C, and that is what a bino and Jean said. A communion in that immediately, no. And he says, see, and a bino who said, now we should involve Otunfo because a seminary in Yana, a baby see paying an answer. And in Otunfo, Bemoa, obey you soon in Yansa, in him, Jenny experience. No one making sure that some night they above him. In the whole discussion we are having, Conspicuously missing is the, the Minister of State in charge of tertiary education, former Pro Vice Chancellor Professor. Yeah, this is a luminary, which I expect that 
under his nose. I did not expect this because if people were leading this and they didn't know, he should have given them a wise counsel over what ha happens at the university. At the end of the day, it the is, council has already taken yeah, 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 No, no, no. In the first the, place, the, the if, the, the, if, the, the, if the council had taken a decision, he could have advised them that they should go to Asante. He not can, today. He can advise, not today. He can, he can the also the, the, that the, the government rushed into going to appoint a council when they were not supposed to do that. And that is a fundamentally wrong. It means that they were no advisor at all. The what they did did not even show that there was somebody who knows how the universities work. And that is why I, 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 I've, lost, I've lost confidence in his tenure. Because I felt that his presence should have told them that this is how we do it. It is on record that he even backed the decision of the fund and the council. The convention. Yes. The convention. And he even uh, the president was informed. And the president ah. said that they were going to review it. And they, they took all this long period for this thing to happen. I say, I say no. to you. I say no. a even that the that convention, say, was. even this convention, some people are for, for me, I'm against it, say, who oh, converted a single sex hall to a million And you the papa. But opinion should be opinion. That's his opinion. So it shouldn't be said. Everybody should and, 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 uh, let uh, be watch against it. Let us watch it. Go and watch the kind of people, the likes of John Mahama. Come uh, uh, John Mahama. Uh, 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 the, uh, the Chicago Omahini. These are guys from Commonwealth Hall. You may go to see people behaving and think that they don't learn. These are intelligent people who come from there. The one that comes to Cansford, when it comes, when, when it comes to Katanga, it comes to Commonwealth Hall. Look at the people. Look at Ebe Fibu Juna. He was a chief vendor. All these people know the time they study and the time they play. You can't reduce them to that. Morale is very high. The governing council. Okay. It's expected to be reconstituted. What do you expect to see? Amon brasse muno isuko and koshe be be a problem in starting here because be be ang kokan papa and papa inye credit. But we all know that this is because of the conversion. And I make sure say maybe there is even more to it. Now inye recently granny and him said they have a private cell in the school. Minyaku school or Kenya University. I've never heard of, of it before. And you know they should go to the root of the case. They should also call the VC. Because I the VC is not a VC. It's 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 a uh, George will come so that you be near at the end of the day. What the woman put by, no somebody being put by. You have a week, I can't hear. Five week, I can't hear. They join here. First and foremost, one year of public forum or campus war, so that the student will bring out whatever they are uh, they are facing into the public domain, so that we will know. Now, governing council now by any so, it should be detached from our political egoism. Now, I call it the Ekwambia the Saban and Pev. VC will be at them away to the University of Winneba, OC, and we'll open away the same thing. One pen, one ma, one detach, one detach, one detach the politics in the Now, one ma, the king of Asante Kingdom, the king of Asante Kingdom, a very powerful role in constituting the new uh, Fauna Council. The University Council is made up of other bodies that they send their representatives. So, if it is that, at a point in time, those representatives took a decision that we are not they can reconstitute by different representatives that will look at it. Secondly, the government is uh, have four slots. Let's look at those who were there. How did they push that? And then look at the chancellor himself. That what did they tell him and what did they allow? Or is it that they decided he wasn't there and they got to this far? Well, to a large extent, I want to believe that if the chancellor was there, it means that he had also endorsed. So is the council that help the VC, and the VC too, should begin to look at what happens. If there are reasons why the VC can advance that we should have these changes, he should look at the reaction that have come. It means that the step that was taken is wrong. It's not for nothing that people go to take old students to become headmasters of a particular school. And if you are alumni of a place and you still do certain things and get the same result, it means that you have to watch what time it is. So for me, I think that there should be soul searching on the council. Decision uh, you know, I cannot say say vice chancellor mm -hmm. because he has no right to say say on an autonomous decision mm -hmm. binding the whole yeah. school. There is an uh, a, a counselor on your way the Though some of the old transfers, you know, at the end of the day, the leader 
and now as a mini never be see because who tear demonstrations in a course now all the students were saying is the VC must resign. No, we say we have cancer and all those things, but they know he is the leader in terms of administrative works and he is in charge of all those uh, administrative works in Nina. And you know, this committee council and what be constituted. If almost a seven, no moon say VC, no, in a one year, a juma year, Nasa or the Juma Batua, so be it. Before this impasse, in the bond there, there are good deeds of this current VC in terms of security, road network, everything. He was, he, within the shortest period, I transformed school. And he was on course to do certain infrastructure facelift. But the um, uh, conversion of Benu has created a lot of problems. And I think that he didn't take that decision alone. It was a collective decision of the council. To me, Pedro Munde, vice chancellor, he has a very good motive. One shana, one more juma. No student in the school, anyone can say the only thing that can calm ten pairs down is to re uh, fund and uh, convert the, the, the horse to each, each single sex horse. Okay, I think that the, uh, the way forward is that the decision of the vice chancellor of not to even recognize executives of certain halls is something that they will have to reserve because the student have some confidence in those leaders. Yeah. And secondly, I also think that. The vice chancellor did not take some of these decisions alone. If those decisions are used, meted out, and people are not happy, I think that they will reconsider and probably review them. And I want to believe that I'm not for the vice chancellor being asked to step aside. But if he's given an opportunity to come back and continue, he will not repeat some of the things that he, he, he did to get us to this stage. Because I think that almost good number of people felt that if even the council had recommended he the vice chancellor should have looked at the implications of the student body and the results that come out of it because if they say that go and insult a chief that he's stupid if you can go and do that but they may beat you because you are the transmitting point of the message i'm sure you also have some concerns and how you want government to address the issue going forward you can go onto our various social media platforms and post your comments there this has been the Daily Rant with me, Eric Yeoji from Takradi. Welcome back. Now, later on in the show, we'll be bringing you the very first edition of Fix It. If you have your own automobile or if you have the chance to use an automobile by, owned by someone else, and you're learning how to fix your own car, this is the platform for you. Fix it. And for all uh, petroleum management uh, organizations, or if you like spare parts dealers, this is the platform where you can get to advertise your goods and services. Now, Vodafone says you need to make the smartest choice for your business. Now, go for uh, smart business from Vodafone experience, real flexibility, convenience, and productivity. Smart business from Vodafone allows you to create your own customized data and voice plan to suit the unique requirements of your business, whether it's for the airtime uh, that your workers need to make those critical calls or data packages for email and digital marketing, they've got you covered. Also, you get a chance to uh, roll over all the unused data to save some cash for your business. Move your business into the future with Vodafone Smart Business. Call them on 0302-334-040 or 0800-10000 or visit www.vodafone.com.gh slash business slash smart business to build your own plan. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Are you ready? That's the question they're asking you. My guest this morning for the news review segment, the Honorable uh, Al Hassan Suhini is the MP for Tamale North. He's joined us. Alaji Asalam. Wa well, alaikum salam. How are you uh, doing? Uh, right? uh, white is, is, is a sign of victory. Well, um, it's also a sign of uh, my appreciation for life. Right, absolutely. I hear you. Granted by God. <laughs> and uh, the Honorable Andrew Ejapa Mesa is the MP for Second D. Chief, good morning, Council. How are you doing? Good morning. It's been well. Everything cool? Ah, hanging in. How are the rail lines coming up in your, your region? Uh, not too bad. Uh, progressing steadily. Okay. Uh, the aim is to get to Kumasi. And hopefully with the Eastern line also coming up to join, then we'll proceed to Paga. Uh, Paga. I know that the Minister of uh, Railway Development is still uh, engaging mm. uh, with some uh, persons who have expressed interest in uh, 
partnering with government to develop the railway sector. Mm -hmm. But of course, government, and of course, I would grant credit where it is due uh, because uh, the railway line within my constituency, okay. to Takrade, mm -hmm. uh, through Kujukrum, was done by the NDC. Right. And, uh, Honorable Jogate is continuing from Kujukrum up mm -hmm. towards uh, 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 Kumase, like I said, so that. Uh, the critical raw material that we need mm. uh, that is usually now carried by trucks right. uh, can, can be carted uh, through the railway system. Mm. Absolutely. So you want to travel by train to your hometown anytime um, soon? I think it will be um, a plus for us all mm. as, as a country mm. uh, if we diversify our means of transport. Okay. Especially when it comes to the haulage of uh, goods, right? Uh, it will uh, ensure that our roads uh, last longer. Mm. The lifespan of our roads uh, will be increased because of the pressure that it ha it it ha you know that it comes under mm. as a result of the haulage <coughs> of uh, goods. You know the devastation that uh, is caused, but. I just want to comment, my brother Bobo, for sure. uh, departing from what many communicators of this government uh, have been doing when it comes why, to why don't you focus the progression. Okay. To, to the, well, that's why I'm focusing but the, the on The truth you. is only one. I'm, I'm so focusing on you. I'm focusing on you. Yeah, I'm so commending so you for exclude departing. Exclude everybody else and just stick to the issue, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, I, because I, you see, I, 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 I allow him to, to, to make his Can I his make statement. the point? Yeah, so, sure. so I think that he must be commended for departing from the uh, other communicators of this government who uh, seem to uh, suggest or communicate as if um, nothing was happening in the railway sector <laughs> before they came mm. uh, into office. I mean, thanks to the visionary leadership of uh, His Excellency President Mahama, uh, the railway master plan was completed and launched in 2013, and it was to ensure that we increase our uh, railway uh, network by about 4,000 kilometers, uh, uh, you know, or so. And the financing arrangement for most of the projects that are being rolled out today had all been uh, concluded mm. by the NDC government. And work actually started in some parts of, 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 of the country. And that is why, uh, uh, again, I'm happy he acknowledged that mm. in his constituency, in fact, the whole stretch was even completed and commissioned mm. by President Mahama. So it is good that uh, uh, Honorable Joe Gatte is focused on following the master plan uh, that was launched <coughs> uh, uh, by President. I mean, he didn't just jump into it without a policy. Mm. He is that kind of leader. He was thoughtful mm. about the need for us to have a master plan in place and work you know, according to the master plan, looking at the cost elements okay. uh, 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 and, and ticking the boxes as, as we go. So Honorable Joe Gatte is doing well, uh, working with that master plan and actually utilizing some of the financing agreements that have been, you know, arranged mm. uh, by the previous government. Okay. It's all for the good of the country. Absolutely. Most grateful. And uh, facts are facts. See, That's what Bobo uh, says. Yeah, slight says. correction. You see, the impression that my very good friend, uh, Alas uh, Suini seeks to create uh, by attributing some visionary uh, stature to former President Rodney. You, you have a problem uh, with that? Uh, of course. Former President because the, the, the Railway Master Plan did not commence in 2013. Was it perfected around It was time? completed. Okay. Okay, so it's not like some vision that he all of a sudden woke up and dreamt about uh, that he started implementing that others are continuing. You recall that during President Kufo's era, there was a ministry for railway development that was set in place. Mm. It was at that time that the process of putting together the railway master plan was initiated. I remember that. Uh, okay, uh, so um, let's, I mean, do, look, doctor, do, like doctor I said, engineer the facts are that, facts. That Markin was, was in charge of the Railway Development right. Authority or so. Right. So, so some, work, some work has so been done. Let's, 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 in the spirit of us all knowing and acknowledging that government is a continuum, mm. I will give credit where it is due. But to suggest 
something else. You know, as if, if to say the conversation Mr. is nice the only from person start. who has a vision so, that has dreamt of some Ghana that nobody else has dreamt about. It's, tomorrow, sometimes tomorrow, it's Honorable Joe Gatti will be called a visionary because of how he's continuing what's happening. Tomorrow he'll be called a visionary. Or well, you would take that from I, him. I, I don't know why you want to engage in the <laughs> realm of speculation. <laughs> you know, These are the issues. Let's let's deal with them. So so there's the speculation okay, on my we've, part. We've had that, plans yeah. on the drawing board for ages that have not been implemented. Okay. No, you, I, I want country. to take your departure from it. It's all right. Let's go. Let's no, move just, on. Just a slide. Uh, no, no, just let, a slide one. I mean, he it, he won't have to come in. Uh, I just I just I will agree with him. But you see, he has he has you know uh, decided to engage in uh, an argument that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I did not seek to say that it was originated mm -hmm. by uh, former President <laughs> Mahama. What I said. <laughs> was that that master plan mm -hmm. was commissioned and launched and he did not just but you said the visionary leadership okay. of mr mahama you, you will plan. not agree so let let's explain. move on let me explain you will not you not leadership. agree let's move on i was applying as usual is zero two zero two one six 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 three three that's zero two zero two one six 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 three three join us with your thoughts and comments we'll share that with the rest of the wonderful world i only sought to uh you know break their thoughts about the rail, railway uh, industry and how we're going to help to, to boost our economy and transportation in this country. It looks like it's turning to something <laughs> else. So let's move on now. The KNUSD saga, Otumfo is the savior. Tax to reconstitute council by Friday. Also, uh, that's on the front page of the daily graphic. Dissolution of KNUSD council. Chancellor to set up new body uh, Friday. That's uh, second of uh, the the month of November, a new governing council to be reconstituted. Vasti reopens November 8th, you tax suspense strike. Yesterday, Honorable Suhini, your side in Parliament uh, accused the government of doing a lot of things that was not helping uh, in, this, in these matters. And you are essentially were calling for the, the head of the Minister for Education and some other. What, what exactly were the key pointers in that press conference? And why would you make those calls anyway? Well, first of all, um, what is happening at KNUST is a reflection of the uh, super incompetence of the NPP government in many other uh, sectors. And yesterday at our press conference, we highlighted the haphazard and reckless manner okay. in which the government so far have handled the issues, you know, um, surrounding the uh, AMPAS uh, that we all are very worried about uh, in K at KNUST. And that is what I, 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 I hinted at earlier uh, when my brother did not understand my reference to former President Mahama as a visionary. Uh, and someone who uh, was careful okay. in taking on issues uh, and always uh, was thoughtful before he took on issues. I mean, some of these issues, if you look at what is happening, it is clear that government approach is as a result of, you know, their inability to carefully think through the issues okay. and also, you know, uh, take decisions that will inure to the benefit of the students and the faculty. Mm. So for us, the minority, fundamentally, uh, we are worried uh, for what appears to have become a consistent uh, pattern by government to invade uh, autonomous uh, tertiary institutions and remove uh, principal officers uh, it did not appoint. Mm. And when this matter started, I was at pains to say that, look, there are issues that have to be addressed. And the issues that had to be addressed had been highlighted by the students who went on a legitimate demonstration. Okay. The only point of departure mm. we have as a minority with the students is when it turned violent. Mm. And we even have uh, suggestions and information to the effect mm -hmm. that some of the people who were engaged in the violence mm -hmm. were not students. Right. And that they were actually bashed mm -hmm. from, you know, places 
other than uh, mm -hmm. the campus mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. And so we think that even further investigations can reveal mm -hmm. Uh, the people who took advantage of the students' mm -hmm. grievances, mm -hmm. genuine grievances, to engage in this vandalism. Mm -hmm. And those people can be sanctioned. But we do not the, believe. The, the CCTV cameras uh, yeah. have identified a few people. Yeah, we do not believe that the students who we think are disciplined mm -hmm. and were simply highlighting uh, concerns mm -hmm. that they had would have been minded to engage in those acts of violence. Okay. And so we are convinced that if proper investigations are carried out, mm. uh, 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 the suspicion we have mm. that some people, other than students, were imported onto the campus to engage in this violence uh, 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 will be revealed mm. and, and, and appropriately uh, punished. You see, Johnny, mm -hmm. when the matter started, mm. I was at pains to make that point that, look, this, these issues have to be addressed. Okay. But people should not take advantage of the issues to do like we have seen them do in other state institutions. Which you know, state engage institutions? in patronage, patronage <laughs> dismissals. Engage in patronage dismissals. And, you know, um, 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 state capture, mm -hmm. if you like, which is akin to um, a mindset of winner takes all. Unfortunately, the apostles of winner takes all have all lost their voices and this is the time that we expect them to be speaking out you recall that this whole thing started in other tertiary institutions like winneba and when people spoke about the political maneuvers that led to the removal of the uh, uh, principal at uh, the, the the vice chancellor i mean the principal at the winneba uh, university uh, people did not pay much attention I, and, thought, I thought that matter went to court. And but but I am talking about the political maneuvers that were that were also involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have had political maneuvers even in court okay. systems. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say that because it went to court, then there were no political maneuvers. It was obvious mm -hmm. to all that it was politically instigated. Now, when after the success, mm -hmm. so called, you know, uh, at Winneba. Uh, a certain agri uh, agri Finn agri -fin, right. wrote a letter mm. about a month or two or three ago mm. to the, uh, the, the vice chancellors of University of Ghana mm. and KNUST vice chancellor, asking them to also hand over and step aside. Mm. So when this all, whole brouhaha started, some of us saw the you know, underhand moves mm. by some political figures to further their aim of removing some of these people, perhaps because they do not think that they are beholden to them, maybe because they did not appoint them. Mm. But these are professionals. These are academicians who know their staff and are not, you know, to be beholden to any government, Today, regardless of which government appointed them. So we are saying mm -hmm. that what is happening at KNUST okay. is actually a reflection of the haphazard n n governance that we have been uh, 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 we have been under since January, you know, 2017. By, by November and we 2, think when the uh, Chancellor, His Royal Majesty, two four eight two, constitutes this new uh, council and, and settles the dust, uh, will that solve the problem? You see, I feel sorry for the revered and respected Otunfo. Why so? He has been so disrespected mm. in the process of creating this mess. And after the mess is created, he's now being asked to clean it. And that is why I'm sorry for him. I mean, if government was minded, and if they respected his teacher, mm. some of the decisions that they took mm. wouldn't <coughs> have been taken without consultation with him. So you don't take those decisions, mm. only for those decisions to backfire, and then you retreat and make him the career of the mess. But knowing the wisdom with which he is made of, mm. I am sure that he will steer this, you know, uh, to a very, you know, uh, impressive end. Mm -hmm. Because what is the rush? 
in forming an interim governing council. And that is what has even shocked the feuding factions. If you, if you want to know how messy this is, according to government, students wanted an intervention. UTAG wanted an intervention. All the stakeholders wanted an intervention. How come this particular intervention seemed to have united the feuding factions? Because the students are against the, the dissolution of the council. UTAG is against the dissolution of the council. It should tell you that is not what they anticipated. But that is what people in government, and in the NPP especially, have had at the back of their minds from day one. And it was told to us mm. by their youth organizer, by their national organizer, and other that, leading that functionaries what? that the vice chancellor will be dismissed. And so for them, the focus was not on resolving whatever grievance may be genuine. Mm. The focus was on removing one man. What was there was there was there wrong in the government, the ministry, for example, taking action and say, look. This has gone beyond control. We want to step in now and right the wrongs. Was it yes, wrong? Yes, government has limits. This country is governed by laws. Right. Government has limits. Mm. And, the, and, and what government did by imposing a curfew, for example, was within the, 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 the control of government. Mm. That is what it is supposed to do. Mm. By even instructing that the uh, university we cancel, uh, be, be closed down is also within government. In fact, this is not a unique situation mm. we have had worse demonstrations and worse you know fracas on our university campuses in this country mm. never in the history not even under president rawlings who was thought to have had to to have uh, you know uh, military mm. you know tendencies mm. did we have the interference of academic work in the manner this government is doing mm. you know no councils where you don't interfere <sighs> in look johnny we have been in this country when even the decision by the Minister for National Security to uh, stop a university from constructing an entrance wall was considered interference of academic you know, independence. How much more the circumvention of the act of the university leading to the dissolution of a council and the request for the vice chancellor to step aside in total disregard and disrespect to the chancellor who is not just an ordinary citizen, mm. but the overlord of the Asante kingdom. Okay, thank you. Bobo, step in for me. Why is there, is there a political monkey hand uh, that is moving things in the dark? Because Professor <coughs> Obri Danso's tenure was supposed to have ended in 2020. Why is there a deliberate attempt, as the minority says, to push him out of office? What do you stand to gain? Well, I guess it's appropriate to say good morning to our church viewers, mm -hmm. uh, particularly my constituents in second day. Uh, it's pathetic how uh, our friends on the other side always want to read political meanings into serious situations that require government attention. Mm -hmm. In any event, as we speak, has the vice chancellor been dismissed? He was asked to step aside by the NTC. Does that constitute dismissal? What, what does that constitute? You're a lawyer. Explain to me. No, what what you, does that say? You see, that this, this is not law. It's commonsensical. Okay. What does the common sense if explain? one person is in office and is asked to step aside following to enable some investigation to proceed, mm -hmm. does that constitute dismissal? When you reconstitute no, the no, council. See, hold on. Roland, hold on. Roland. No, Roland. this is Johnny. Hold on. Uh, Johnny, oh, please. No. It's, it's well, important. Well, well, I, 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 will deal, I will deal with all the issues that you raised. I, I want my viewers to understand. No, now, you see, let, let's, not, let's not try to create issues where there's none. This is a simple, straightforward matter. Okay. You sit here. There's been an mm. issue. You are asked to step aside for investigations to be completed. Mm. Have you been dismissed? Well, when the initial council... Please, that let's, were, let's be hold, straight. Hold on. I would deal with the council matter. No, but you see... No, please. It, it, you see, it feeds into it, doesn't it? It doesn't feed into anything. Let's deal with the issues as they are. Okay. Does that constitute dismissal? For the benefit of our listeners, mm. please. I, I don't answer questions. I only you answer, don't? Yes. I see. But clearly, uh, our listeners will know that the vice-chancellor has not been dismissed. Mm. 
So to suggest that there's some grand scheme by this government to remove that individual, mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's unbelievable. You see, suggesting that it was government that asked the vice chancellor to unleash security men on peaceful demonstrating students, a situation which led to a reprisal <laughs> the next Monday by the students that led to the destruction of property. Did they suggest that? Ah, but he's saying that it's a grand scheme to remove the man. So the events that are part of the scheme to remove him include government asking him to unleash university students on the student uh, security on the students you see let's not do this this issue was an unfortunate situation okay. that happened at the university campus mm -hmm. students on peaceful march okay. were brutalized and of course subsequently they reacted as we would have done when we were in Komoroto. Okay, during our days. I don't subscribe to the destruction of university property that the students undertook. But clearly, the situation had gone out of hand. And the regional security council had to intervene and take a decision. Now, the stakeholders were pointing accusing fingers at each other. And so, government took a decision to dissolve the council and set up an interim council to manage the affairs of the university. And I hear people raise issue that that act by government mm. constitutes an illegality. Under which law? You've seen the, the I have by Occupy Ghana. I have seen it. Quoting read, laws. Read that says the, you start read, side step read the counselor. Occupy Ghana statement carefully. Mm. And read the invest KNUSD Act. And tell me whether it's the Chancellor of the University that appoints the university council. He is not, but as soon as the So the, the, the power to appoint invested in government, mm. of course, with representative constitution mm. that several other stakeholders ought to nominate a people a convocation for of, of membership mm. absolutely the power to appoint does not presuppose a power to dismiss well but where it's the, not implied but where in is that implied so but see, where, where the university hold on counsel these are matters of law where the where the appointing authority and you know that it, prior to the coming to force of this new act it was the president who was vice, uh, who was uh, chancellor for all universities. I don't have a problem. Subsequently, after this new act, uh, the the universities had autonomy, and their vice chan their chancellors were there. In this particular instance, it's His Royal Majesty Otumfo who is just chancellor. Now, the concern has been that he was sidestepped in the reconstitution of the new council, which has now been dissolved, and Otumfo has been asked to constitute a new one by the second. No. Of November. Otufo has not been asked to reconstitute mm. a council. Read the statement that was issued by the ministry yesterday. Mm. They said, okay. okay. You read it. Please. So what is he supposed to do? No, you read it. What is he supposed no, to it's do? It's important. Okay. Otufo is leading. Okay. Okay. He is not reconstituting. Because, for instance, the other stakeholders who are supposed to nominate people onto the university council. Otunfo is not going to go to UTAC and nominate one member from UTAC. UTAC is going to nominate their own person. And when the nominations are done by these various stakeholders, mm. including government, who does the appointment? Is it the chancellor or it's government? Read the act. And read the Occupy Ghana statement whether they did not acknowledge that fact. Mm. But proceeded to suggest that because there's a chancellor, they think that the proper thing that government should have done was to allow the chancellor to execute all these functions. Is that what the law says? Did we finish with the internal mechanisms to solve this problem? What were the internal mechanisms having regard to the national security issue that we're having on the university council, uh, university campus, to resolve this matter? 
What were the internal mechanisms that government failed to comply? Show me the mechanism that says that when there is an issue between the vice chancellor and students, when students go on rampage, these are the processes that you need to follow internally before you go external to resolve the matter, if you're unable to resolve the matter internally. Let's not play politics with everything. Okay? This statement that was issued was completely needless. But of course, they are opposition. So they ought to necessarily have their voices heard. Do they have a genuine concern? Where is it? Where is the genuine concern in this matter? Where is the academic freedom that has been infringed upon? Where is the monopoly, mon uh, monotony of the university that government has sought to impugn? Where? Where is it? Yet, they've gone to town, as usual. Consistent. Throw mud at government. They raise they, all sorts of accusations. And it's interesting, point he made, that maybe we are seeking to remove mm. this vice chancellor because he's not playing ball with government because we did not appoint him. But the government that appointed them are gone. They back and forth. Uh, from, you see, from the side so, of government. so in yes. one breath, that's, Bobo, Bobo, that's on. what you said. Bobo, hold on, the, the back and forth on the side of government. So uh, what government appointed when, him? When the impasse started, the four ministers were sent in there onto the campus of KK and US team. Subsequently, an interim council was, was set up. Now, even before the council starts working, uh, it's, been, it's been dissolved and a new one is to be reconstituted by November 2nd or November 2. It does mark of indecisiveness, doesn't it? I don't think so at all. How do you explain because that? the council, prevailing university council, prior to the emergence of this problem, stands dissolved. The interim council that was put in place was mandated for a maximum of three months. Mm. Now, within that period, some new developments have come up that has led to an earlier resolution of the problem. Mm. And so, a new council is going to be reconstituted to take over the management of the investing. How does that constitute... Is, is the Asantini going to clean the mess? What mess has been created for the Asantini to clean? Where is the mess? What mess is Nana Otumfo going to clean? The reconstitution of the university council has been accepted by all stakeholders. Clearly, it tells you that the actions that were superintended by the previous or now dissolved council was not accepted to all the stakeholders. So what are we talking about? This, they, Did the events that mm, take place at KNUST excite any of us sitting here? It, is it not surprising? And you see, mm. he cites an example of Mr. Rollins' era even under military. Mm. I didn't say even under military. When he was a military dictator. No, no, he, I didn't, didn't say, say that. that. What did I you did say? I did not say that. I said even under former President Rawlings, mm. we saw worse demonstrations of students leading to vandalism. Exactly. And even a man like that with military tendencies mm -hmm. did, not, did not interfere in the manner that you are interfering. All the university demonstrations that took place during Mr. Rawlings' era, if I recall, mm. okay, was between the university students and government, not university students and university authorities. Yes, even government. And so, even government so, so going on demonstration it. against students' loan, for instance, you expected that Mr. Rollins would have dissolved the university council. Bobo, so no, I'm asking. For the you, you expected for that the to, to, to do what? To do what? I mean, anyway, you make Bobo, let's, let's Bobo, not make do this. Now, let me, okay? let me ask this question. It's not going to advance... This, the development of this country in any way. Honorable Mesa, let me ask this question. Now, the University Council is constituted by, if you like, a convocation of representation. The SRC is in there, UTAG is in there, and, and everybody else. How come that this new council that will be, will be constituted, sadly, you say, seems to have sorted everybody out, everybody is in agreement, but there was a previous council that had all the representation, the full representation, and they were not in support of their own decision. In fact, the student body are agitating a decision that was put up by the council then. 
Okay? How come? What would change in this new council, which is why like, everybody is kept like quiet? Every, every governing The constitution body. of the council hasn't changed it. Yeah, of course. But there's a voting that takes place at council meetings. Every governing body has a certain procedure that governs its meetings. Right. Decisions that clearly will be taken would necessarily be by the majority. And uh, when a decision of the council is taken, it binds everybody. So, yes, the students may have had representatives on the council and they will continue to have representatives on the council. Uh, maybe the previous council did not consider into detail the, circum uh, the consequences of some decision that mm. they would have approved. Uh, that clearly has led to the violence and mm. subsequent closure of the university. So every council that is reconstituted would have to look at the issues uh, much more broadly to arrive at a Is government going to stay away? Beneficial. Is government going to stay away? Uh, that's one of the concerns that, look, uh, it, it looks like there's interference. Is government going to stay away? I fail to see the interference. Of course, government has not involved itself in the running of KNU, KNUST until this issue broke up, which mm. required an intervention from government to stabilize the situation and chart a path going forward. That situation has clearly been brought under control. Mm. Uh, new council is going to be reconstituted. And the KNUST will run as has been running uh, in the past. The, the chronology, uh, University of Education with the bar, GIJ, uh, KNUST, the, the, these are the minority listed, some of those ones. And it presupposes that there is a calculated attempt to wipe out people who are not appointed by this but administration see, uh, to, to go out. Johnny, you, you yourself pointed out clearly to my very good friend Alassan mm -hmm. that the uh, University of uh, Education Winneba issue mm -hmm. uh, was a matter that was determined by a court of competent jurisdiction. He says there were still political undertones. Well, I don't know where the political undertones in the courts take place. I don't know whether he has some knowledge mm -hmm. about political maneuvering in the courts. Uh, I do not know. I am a practitioner in the courts. Of course, the courts have had their problems with their nasty, but mm -hmm. I am an ardent believer in the justice that is administered by our courts. Of course, there are bad nuts, as was shown during the Anas expose. Mm. But our judges are firm. They evaluated the evidence as presented before them. Mm. And they arrived at a conclusion without one shred of interference from government. Mm. So they can say all the things that they want to say. Okay. You see, I have restrained myself R wrap up for me please so we can in in responding to his assertion that this government is not thoughtful uh, uh, why, why are you restraining yourself because you see in responding i may be tempted to say things that will not be pleasant okay particularly Th then, against then don't, then don't say my revered former president of the republic mm. then don't it, say it Johnny. because in their thoughtfulness no no then don't say it it's okay they if, talk if you, through schemes if you to have create loot and share, share the resources of this country if you have restrained that is thoughtfulness if you have restrained yourself restrain we are not yourself. thoughtful we've heard i restrain you forthwith thank you, you see, Johnny, so maybe, Johnny, i give you one minute yes, and then i'll and try then we, i'll we try wrap up. that one minute. you see in his opening remarks he confirmed my position that what we are witnessing is akin to patronage dismissals. That can also be likened to state capture, mm. which is usual with winner-take-all policies. Mm. Why do I say that? If you look at what have been happening from Winneba mm. to GIJ to mm. Cape Coast to mm. even the Electoral Commission, you will be left with no shred of doubt mm. that we have a government that has the mindset of capturing the state and you know appointing people they think will be beholden to them mm. without you know a respect to the building of uh, institutions why do i say he, he vindicated my position now we all know that as we stand mm. investigations are being carried out and and encouraged to be carried out mm. to determine the issues that led to the demonstration mm and even the, the, the vandalism. Mm -hmm. But my brother here, Bobo, 
throws caution to the wind, disregards the you know, complaints of the security who have also been on several media platforms to say that the students were pelting stones at them and disrespected them and even beat them in some cases. The security men have said that. Right. Now he disregards that and on he the, goes forward night. and he goes forward to say that the vice chancellor, like I said, mm. get the dog a bad name and hang it. That the vice chancellor unleashed the security men on the students. That's his conclusion. He does not even pay attention to the fact that there are claims and counterclaims mm. which need to be verified. Because in the but mind of the, in the mind in the mind of the government and its people, he, he, the focus he, is not on issues that have to be addressed, he, genuine he issues said, that said, have Sweeney, to be addressed. Sweeney, the focus is on removing one man. So he said that he said, he, Sweeney, he said that well, so then you are what you are suggesting, yeah. and these are his words. Yeah. He says what you are suggesting is yeah. that it was the government that advised the mm. vice chancellor to no, no, it was the government that's that not advised how he put it, no, he, he, asked, put it? he asked the question the, that, what the that was it the government that asked the vice chancellor to unleash security on students right. that's conclusive in his view okay. the vice chancellor unleash security on students okay the, and and that's what i'm saying it has vindicated and when he says that we are talking because we are opposition we hear him src is opposition Utah is opposition. Occupy but Ghana seen, is opposition. So we hear him. You've seen again, contrary views again, being brother, expressed let me, by let me, other let me just wrap up on this. Let me just... The government does not appoint the council. And he's a lawyer. The government have four representatives on the council Absolutely. of 15 members. Mm. So the government does not have the appointing authority when it comes to council is appointment. Is the VC that comes up? But it is, the, the it is not the council. Their own. So the anyway. council, the government only has four representatives. Okay. So the government oh. can only see, appoint the four okay. or remove the four. We're, we're up, we're, see, we're up you the see, conversation, that, yes. That is a complete misunderstanding of the provisions of the act. Okay. Okay. Government have the right, has the right to nominate members to the council. Mm. Four. Other, well, of course, four. Just like all other laws that we pass, including the most recent Special Prosecutors Act, mm. which gives institutional representation. Check the provisions to see who does the appointment. Mm. Check and check the Investing Act, okay. the Investing Act. There's there's one law that uh, mm -hmm. the the entire media fraternity is hoping that will be passed. The RTI. You're both in Parliament. Uh, quickly, just one minute. But, but when are we passing the the RTI? Well, I I you promised. As we speak, Your government promised. Yes, Mr. President, promised that uh, by the end of this session, okay. which ends on December thirty first. Okay. Of course, at the time he said meeting. Uh, when the bill had already, right. mm. I mean, had, had been presented only three or four days before. Right. Uh, he subsequently admitted mm. that he himself, even though he's been a three-time member of parliament, always gets to confuse meeting and sessions. And mm. many people are guilty of that confusion. The intendment uh, uh, was that it was going to be done by end of this year. Right. Uh, of course, we are resuming sitting today mm. uh, after the recess. Uh, we'll get to know the uh, uh, agenda for the meeting. Okay. Uh, uh, we started the consideration of the bill at the last meeting. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, between now and mid-November when the budget would be read, mm. uh, I'm sure that it will be tabled for us to continue the consideration and possibly complete it because when the budget is done, mm. then of course as is customary, okay. uh, Parliament will have to focus on dealing with the budget mm. to meet the timeline that the constitution imposes on parliament okay. mm. before uh, 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 any other business would be would be would be considered i see so when you're a former media man or you still are part of mm. us um, so, so <laughs> you're still a part of us once a journalist always well, a you journalist. don't have a license how many to practice how, how many how many uh, how <laughs> many Mr. more <laughs> how many more presentations before we get this law passed finally the rti well i have free advice to my colleagues in the media mm. and especially campaigners for the passage of the RTI bill. I want it passed also. And that is why I am minded to give this advice. Okay. I think the focus of the campaign is wrong. Mm. Why? The focus of the campaign should be 
government and not parliament. I hear there will be picketing and demonstration in parliament today. Yeah. I think that it should be done at the Flagstaff House. Mm. Because, you see, we have a government nominee in parliament mm. who represents government business. And so, whatever government wants done in parliament, mm. it's done. It's done. And we have situations where bills come to parliament, you know, agreements come to parliament, and we are not even given two, three hours to study it before we pass it. Mm. So if the RTI bill is delaying in parliament, it is because it is not the priority of government. Okay. So if campaigners, you know, take the pressure and the heat to government to make it a priority, mm. they will instruct their leader of government business in mm. parliament to make it a priority. And parliamentarians will have no option than to pass it. Okay. Just the like business, we have passed business, other agreements and bills, business, even when we have... The business 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 parliament hasn't got and any hand uh, honorable in Andrew setting Jaffa business Mesa for parliament. Is, yeah. Yeah. On behalf of the MPP, he was here. On behalf of the MPP, he is a legal practitioner, the MP for Second D. And uh, Honorable Alassan Suhini is a member of the NDC's communication team. Of course, he is the MP for the Tamale North constituency. Gentlemen, but I heard thank you very much. He's been apologized to. We are, we are investigating. We're Apology investigating. Well, fix it. We're fixing it. And. Um, the, the new segment on New Day is coming up right now. If you have an automobile and you're looking for ways to learn how to fix it and manage it, this is your segment. If you're also a spare parts dealer, dealership or if you're uh, a petroleum company and you're looking for some marketing platform to do some exploits and rake in some more revenue, this is it. Right about now, fix it on your screens. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Fix It. My name is Chris Kusi. I'm the CEO of Auto Dwelling Limited and Multitech Limited. We're a vehicle maintenance center based in Accra. And today I'd like to talk to you about what you can do to save on your fuel consumption on your vehicle. Running the vehicle hasn't gotten any cheaper. And uh, as we all know, the cost of whirling is going up, cost of maintenance is going up, and uh, wages are not going up either. Uh, but there are a few things you can do to be able to keep your running cost of your vehicle down. And today I'd like to talk about four different topics that can aid in uh, keeping your vehicle uh, cost down. The first one is uh, your tyres. The second one would be um, the weight we carry in the vehicles. And then the third one would be routine maintenance, which is service, your oil change and all of that. And the fourth topic is uh, the aerodynamics of the vehicle. So I'll start with the first one. When it comes to your tyres, um, the manufacturer would recommend a particular tyre pressure and a tyre size for your vehicle. It's best to keep your vehicle at those recommended uh, values. So if the car manufacturer recommends a 205 tyre, you try and keep the 205 tire, don't try and go on with a bigger tire or a smaller tire or a different compound of the tire. So for instance, if the car is designed to run on a uh, summer tire, you run the car on a summer tire, you don't run it on a winter tire for instance. A lot of us go into town and buy tires and we buy the first tire that fits the vehicle. Tires are actually designed for the type of terrain on which they ride on. So if the car is going to be driven on tarmac, you buy the type of tire that is recommended for use on tarmac. If the car is going to be driven in mud or snow, there is a tire for that as well. So um, apart from buying the right tire for the vehicle, it's also recommended that you, you inflate the tires to the recommended tire pressure of the vehicle. You'd usually find that in, uh, on the sticker, which is usually placed on the door jam of the vehicle or in the flap of the fuel um, filler. The second point would be excessive weight. If your car is heavily laden, you'd find that uh, it would take a lot more of the car's resource. Again, when I keep saying the car's resource, I'm talking about fuel. Your car needs its resource to be able to generate the car, and the car that is that it generates comes from the fuel. So if the car is heavily laden, you have unnecessary load in the vehicle. So like um, a gas cylinder, for instance, in your car, you have. Uh, suitcases, you have shoes, you have bags, unnecessary weight, that would 
further put extra weight on the vehicle. Now, uh, an example of that is if, as a human being, your, your, your energy or your resources from the food you eat. So if you're walking around all day carrying a heavy load, you find that you, you, you get tired you know, more often, you'd have to eat more often to be able to replenish that energy. The energy on the vehicle is in the fuel. So if the car is heavily laden, it will need a lot more energy to be able to pull that vehicle uh, to do its, the work it has to do. And the third point is vehicle maintenance. Uh, on this particular occasion, we're gonna talk about engine service. So the engine has a lot of moving parts in it. And in order for these parts to move smoothly without any hindrances, it needs oil. So the engine oil in your car is what allows all the cogs and all the mechanism in the engine to, to, to turn. So once the engine oil wears out and is broken down, the engine struggles to be able to turn because there's no lubrication in the engine. So regular service is important. Changing your oil regularly and putting in the right type of oil will allow the engine to work smoothly and freely. Now the last point for today is aerodynamics. Um, I know it's a very unusual one, most people don't think about it, but anytime you drive your car, you're driving against the forces of the wind. If you're ever driving in a car, you maybe try to put your window down and put your, your hand out, you realize that the forces of the wind is always pushing your hand back. Now that force is not acting just on your hand, it's acting on the whole vehicle. So if your vehicle has, say, a roof rack on top of the car, that area which the roof rack covers is going to be pushing against the wind. It means that it's going to force cause a resistance against the vehicle. When you're driving on the highway and you have your windows down, a lot of air from the outside goes inside the vehicle and the rear windscreen of the vehicle would eventually form like a parachute or would form a catch where it's holding the air back. So the air that goes around the vehicle, instead of the air going around the vehicle, the air is going into the vehicle and holding the car back. It's a bit like trying to run with an umbrella, holding an umbrella. You find the wind which you're walking against or which you're running against is being caught in the back of the umbrella and it will be holding you back. So you will not be able to run as fast as you should. And if you want to run any faster, you need to require more energy to be able to run faster. And again, in a vehicle, the energy that is used is the fuel. So you need to try and keep your car as aerodynamic as possible. Don't have any unnecessary roof racks on the vehicle. Keep your windows up when you're on the highway so that all of the wind that goes, that's meant to go around the vehicle, goes around the vehicle and doesn't get caught up in the vehicle or hold the vehicle back. That's all we have for you on Fix It today. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll have some more tips for you. text messages that you've sent to us but happy birthday to you Ruben a doctor happy birthday also to you Janet Efia Akoto and to you Irajwa Ohini Apia happy birthday we do love you all of you uh, happy birthday to you but we're checking out 3news.com this is the most interactive uh, website that you can find around here sometime well oh, GMB 2018 is still up a uh, stream last weekend uh, a depart of the western region went home so uh, so far, three gone, seven down, uh, more to go. Uh, well, we will have just one queen, but, uh, you know, a lot more. And, uh, well, no news today. Newly trained doctors cry over delayed postings, threatened to picket, and each GMB evicted to get 5,000 from heavy black bus. Of course, government gives a two for five days to form new council for KNUST. And I'll use social media to change the story uh, of the Upper East, Minister says so. Wow, she's trying to get innovative there. She says, well, I will use social media. And apologize to Ghanaians for making you turn on loans. That's President Mahama to uh, President Akufo. Mahama apologizes to assaulted journalists. Is the apology enough? 
I don't know. Is this in enough? Uh, well, let's check out if you have some of your messages here on uh, TV3 New Day. Interesting. Okay. And says, uh, good morning, host. Uh, to you, Mr. Host, to your nation's wide cherished listeners, especially Alassan uh, Suhidi. It's very sad and worrisome that this government is a cause of everything in the KNUST students served notice to the government way back before this demonstration. Comrade Idrisu Niendo, Tamale Central, my regards to the incoming MP for Tamale Central. They uh, started their campaigns already, huh? Okay, we hear you. And uh, this, this man is in Yikpongungu. Tahir Ibrahim from Ipungbungu says, we're appealing to the legislature to use their legislative instrument to pass their right information bill. Why are you dodging this particular bill? Yo. Okay. And uh, the MPPs, uh, do MPP members truly believe in the rule of law? And uh, you're asking, well, the abuse of power by this MPP government is too much. The government is so lawless and so arrogant that they don't even respect someone, uh, some aspect of the constitution to the effect that they have disregarded a recommendation as to how the free SHS should be implemented, leading to this messy situation where secondary schools are being run in torts. Asanko in Santa Maria. And good morning, Mr. Hughes. And morning to your panel, uh, panelists, Alaji uh, Suhini and Mr. Mesa. The NPP man should stop that hypocritical attitude. He now, he's now realizing that people are playing politics to national issues. Just a few years past, he seems to have forgotten the Akufuado and Baumia government is, uh, well, soon to sorting uh, the removal, resorting to removal of all lawful people from their duty posts and replacing them with their own in their interpretation of job creation. That's what you say is the... Uh, explanation you'd want to assign to it. But a lot more of your messages, if they come through, we'll share them with you. Let's see. Itilapia has got something to show uh, us. Of course, I'm sure he has something to show us. And uh, it says, well, at the KNUST crisis resolution table, this is what we have. Uh, and uh, UTAG is at the table. It's certainly not happy. Uh, looking at the uh, other members on the table, on the sides of his eye, and government says, we propose a normalization committee. KNUSDS is sitting there watching what they go on, what they go on. Okay, what's going on? That's uh, it. And, uh, well, we are sending some more of your messages here on New Day. But uh, so far, so good. The messages have come up. Uh, I think you're making <laughs> a good point. Some are, I mean, but also let's beg view, I mean viewers <laughs> that as they send their <laughs> messages make sure you read through it so that it's easy for Johnny and I to read when we have to because when we have to read and you know edit we may change the meaning of what you actually intend to say so make sure you're reading through uh, and sending well, the Charlie, right sometimes, information across sometimes when a message comes like that then <laughs> edit on spot I mean yeah. Johnny you try your best but maybe the intention the of yes of and the, the import message. may be changed because we have to you know edit on impulse so mm. hopefully people will listen to this okay and change. It says when the invisible forces went on rampage the president dissolved them the npp should not think they are wise and nobody else uh, they are wise than anybody else and they should stop their shameful attitude what did they what they did at Wediba spearheaded by uh, Honorable Afenyo Makin would never happen in Kumasi. Good morning, God, uh, Godwin from uh, Keta. Was this spearheaded by him? I thought the matter hmm. went to court. I keep saying this and uh, we keep repeating it. Uh, good morning, Johnny and your guests. Let's be frank to ourselves. Uh, the president, I'm in a hurry syndrome, causing their failure because something they have to take, uh, some, something they have to take their time, uh, they would rush and fail. GF is a clear example and KNUSD is too. It's not an exception. MPP communicators should, come, should not come on your noble platform platform to deceive themselves, uh, not Ghanaians, uh, uh, John, in, uh, well, S-Y-I, -S I don't know what that means. So, Sunyani, is that it? Yeah? Is that how we spell it? Well, okay. So, who misled the president again in dissolving the university council when he has no power to do so? Shaggy Inima says. So, a lot more of your messages coming up. We'll take a break now. We'll return. We'll get into the chamber. Amma has got a lot of legal issues to talk about after this break.
Well, purchasing land in Ghana is a long-term investment and something everyone in Ghana seems to want to do. But after you've bought the land, does that bring you peace or is it the beginning of turmoil to brew? We're going to be joined by Mr. Kwame Jan. He's the senior lecturer at the School of Law at the University of Ghana to delve into this issue of land and its litigation matters. Good morning, Mr. Jan. Good morning. Good to have you here. I'm, I'm privileged to be here. So let's start off with this basic question of as a buyer of a land, how do I know or what certificate do I need to have to know that I am the only owner of that piece of land? Um, good morning once again. Uh, let me make um, a minor correction here. Right. Most of the time, you are not a buyer of land. Okay. You are trying to get some parcel of land to develop, maybe to build a house or, or, or make a farm. Hmm. You are not buying the land. Okay. In about 90% of the time, you are taking a lease hmm. of land. Right. Now, what a lease means is that you are given the right of access and use of land. Okay. And you have what we call in the law exclusive possession. It means when you are put in possession of the land, when you are given the place, the, the seller, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. or any other person cannot come and disturb you on the land. Right. And you are given a fixed term, okay. normally. Or you are given a term that is capable of being made definite. Right. But the, the general principle is that you are given a certain number of years over which you have exclusive possession of over land. land. Okay. And that is a leasehold right. over the land. Most of the time, it is 50 years or 75 years or 99 years. Okay. So, Ghanaians normally say we have bought the land. But we in this business know that they have not bought the land. Right. They have leased the land. Now, what it means is that when the period, the term over which you have the leasehold ends, you will have to vacate or leave the land, right. including your property on the land. You hmm. leave it to the person who <laughs> leased the land to you. Okay. So if you have a 50-year lease today, 50 years from now, right. you may have to leave hmm. the land. Okay. So that clarity is there. Yes. So now in ownership of that lease, what do you need to say, I'm the only person who this land has been leased to for this number of years? Because like you rightly said, there's no buyer. Now, we've all been leased, but it's not only one person who that land has been leased to. You realize five years down the line, it's been leased to so many other people. So who becomes the rightful owner of that lease? And under normal circumstances, one parcel of land mm. should not be leased to more than one person. Okay. And so the, the, the problem you just identified has arisen because of a multiplicity of factors. Oh. In some cases, it's a genuine mistake of surveying. You survey a plan, plan land A. Right. If there is a mistake in the surveying, land A falls in the place where land B is. Okay. So there, there are times where because of genuine survey error, there are mistakes. But there are times where landowners or persons who are transferring land have done what we call multiple transactions. The same owner, owner A, transfers the land to Mr. Mr. B, transfers the same parcel to Mr. C, transfers the same parcel to Mr. D. Now, then a matter arises and someone makes a complaint at the police station. In the, in the past, the police will just tell you this is a land matter, it's not a police case. Now, over the period, the police have now, through education and interactions with the police, the police have now come to realize that when you do multiple transactions in land, it is a police case. Okay. Because if you just said it is not a police case, go and sort yourself out, then you are not going according to the law. Because um, there is a, a, a piece of legislation which has been on our books since 1962. Mm. It's called the Land Registry Act of 1962, Act 122. Now, according to Section 34 of Act 122, if you know that you have already transferred a piece of land, or you know that you are not the owner, right. 
you don't have title to the piece of land, and you make a transaction in respect of land, land it is a second degree felony. Okay. So it's a serious offense which carries long prison sentence. And it's been on our books <laughs> since 1962, before I was born. <laughs> so when you trade in a piece of land, you cannot go back and trade in the same piece of land because in land law, we have a Latin maxim that says, nemo dat quod non habet, okay. that you cannot give what you don't have. Right. So after you gave the land to me, you don't have that land anymore. Mm. You can't go and give it to Dr. Ajiman. Right. But that's what we are confronting mm -hmm. in this country. We have the law since 1962 to deal with this canker. We simply don't apply the law. Mm -hmm. Because I was going to ask, I mean, the law has been in existence for this long, but I don't seem to have heard anyone being imprisoned for it. But again, in that fact, scenario... I, uh, <laughs> through my practice as a lawyer, 20, 28 years, I think I've heard about one case okay. where someone has gone to jail and been convicted right. for multiple transactions in, in, in land according to Section 34. Okay, one case. One case I have anyway. heard. But, you know, in the scenario you created, that's one individual doing the multiplicity. But in other cases, you've got several people claiming ownership of the same parcel of land. And in that case, it's one is to one, but it's still a multiplicity of the sale or the lease. So how do you also go about that equally? What you mentioned is the, it's the result of, in some cases, what we call the mutation of the families. Okay. And it happens a lot in, in the areas around Accra. Right. Some of these lands belong to families. And because of greed, family members who don't have right to sell mm. call themselves heads or chiefs. Right. So one group belonging to the same family will transfer to A. Mm -hmm. Another group belonging to the same family will transfer to B. The same person. So you could have a third and a fourth group, all members of the same family. In fact, sometimes they, they plan, hmm. they, they collude to do it. So they, they have a plan, an agreement that we will sell, you to go and sell. So about four different groups will sell, each of them will be paid. And they know that the system will not catch up with them. Right. So over time, the buyers, so to speak, hmm. get tired. And that's the end of the matter. But anyway, let's come back because of this issue we're talking about and touch on the land tenor system in Ghana. Brief us through exactly what it means when we talk about this land tenor system. Who owns land in Ghana? This is Who a, does the land a, belong to? It's a How cost, we, a, a land cost, on its cost own. one year. <laughs> Just one year narrow it into labor. a few minutes no. for us. Just <laughs> summarize it for us. Okay. There are different classes of land in this country. Okay. There is one set of lands we call stool lands. Okay. Now, when you say stool lands, you can also refer to those lands as skin lands. Okay. What it means is that an entity called a stool or skin, normally presided over by a chief, hmm. has control over that land. Hmm. So they are the proper persons who can make allocations of that area. Okay. In some parts of the country, authority over land is vested in a clan. Hmm. So clan heads have custodianship over the land on behalf of the members of their clan. Mm. So if you go to Adan, for example, there are different clans. Lomobiawe, Tepebiawe, Adibiawe, Akabiawe. All these Biawes are headed by clan heads. Okay. So these are the guys who can allocate the land, mm. not a chief. Right. So if you go to Adan and you are looking for land to invest and you go to the chief's house for land, mm. you won't have any land. Okay. Unless his own family land that he can recommend for you, mm. or his own clan land. Right. There are some parts of the country where the land, the authority over land is vested in the family. Okay. So the areas around Osutare, Osudoku, Afienya, mm. those areas, final authority, what we call their Lodia title right. to land, is vested in families. Okay. Now, there are some parts of the country where final authority to land is vested in Persons we call Tindana. So if you go to Bolga, for example, the areas around Bolga, there are different Tindanas. There's the Tindana of Tindonsobligo, the Tindana of Soin, 
the tindana of the Poritindongo. I mean, so the different tindanas have different jurisdictional areas right. where they control. Mm. They are not chiefs. Mm. They are not family heads. But they are the descendants of the first settlers okay. of that area. Right. Now, and then there are some lands which are state lands. Okay. And these state lands are what we call the lands that have been taken over by the state mm. through the exercise of the state's power mm. of compulsory acquisition. Mm. Where we are right now, we are sitting on state land. Right. It used to be Garland, mm -hmm. which was taken over by the state for public purpose, which is still being used for a public purpose. Okay. Now, there are some lands called vested lands. Mm. Those lands were also taken over by the state, but they have a slightly different regime in terms of um, the extent of state control right. than the, the, the compulsory acquired areas. So there are different strands of land hmm. across the country. Now, question is, how will you know exactly. that this land is, is vested land, land or, or this family? land is family land, mm -hmm. or this land? But that's why you have to come to me. I will charge you a <laughs> fee. And I will tell you what, where you have to go. Mr. Chair, but you can, I mean, isn't this something that by law it should be taught in schools or we should no. know? Because it's part of the way we live. It you're, is something you're, we you're, will eventually you're, you're do. You are a medical doctor. I am. You? Am I a medical doctor? No, you are not. So, but there are a few tips I give you, you like first thing. Why don't you want to you all know. I teach in <laughs> schools. Everyone should know about it. So I feel land ownership, land tenure system in Ghana should be something that is taught. We should all know, at least on the first-hand basis, have a fair idea of what it means to own land or to be leased land so that we know how we're going about it. Because many of the issues do stem from these. Um, it's true. I, if I was in charge of the educational <laughs> curriculum, I would have added some basic right. about the, the law the living law right. kind of okay. so that you can demystify the law slightly hmm. and let the non literates in the law also appreciate right. some of these things maybe you can look at it from social studies hmm. exactly at, at ss exactly. and some small aspects about the land mm -hmm. how ghana acquired its territory right. Gun and how different parts of the land are, of the country are controlled by different groups. Mm. So that if you know, for example, that you are in Bolga, mm -hmm. you don't look for a chief no, for land. You go to the Tindana. You go you for said. a Tindana. Right. I mean, if right. you are in Adan, you go to a clan head. Mm. These are basic things we can teach. But the mechanics of negotiating with the Tindana, that one will those be are your job. In, we'll be in, in domain. Yes. very well. But how does one, you know, acquire, like I was talking about the title, the indenture, the land title, what do these things mean? And what should you have to be confident that this piece of land that has been leased to you is for you? Now, generally, in trying to acquire land, your first step is go to the site. Okay. Normally, the vendor, the person who is trying to sell you the land, I've told you, selling and buying are not the appropriate terms, right. but because of the context in mm -hmm. which we are speaking, the person who is trying to sell you the land mm -hmm. is called a vendor. Okay. He would or she would normally get a surveyor to prepare a parcel plan for you. Okay. You are better off getting your own surveyor to verify the plan mm -hmm. because sometimes you, the, the size of the land, the location of the land that the vendor has given you, mm -hmm. is not necessarily consistent with the situation on the ground. Right. So you are better off verifying the survey work that has been done. Okay. Now, when you go to the ground, ask the neighbors. Hmm. The neighbors, I mean the people who have the adjoining properties. Okay. If you go and you find someone on your left side of the boundary, someone on your right side of the boundary, or some other people in the neighborhood, right. ask them who sold them their land. Right. Because the general principle is that if I own this parcel, hmm. then generally I should be the owner of the parcels around, around it. Right. So if Mr. A is selling you parcel, this parcel, and you ask the adjoining owner, who sold you? And he hmm. said, Mr. C. You ask the next person, who hmm. sold you? He said, Mr. C. Hmm. Then be careful about your Mr. A, right. because there might be the problems in the right. area. Now, if you go in to the site, someone will whisper into your ears, this land has problems, hmm. please. Watch it. So you must do a physical inspection. Okay. Ask questions. Hmm. Afterwards, go to the lands commission. 
because the Lands Commission is the official custodian of the public records on land. Right. So go to the Lands Commission and do a search, an official search. Okay. Now, the challenge that you have is that the official search that you are going to conduct at the Lands Commission will give you a search report. Okay. Unfortunately, in, on the fine print of the search report, it's a disclaimer by the Lands Commission. Hmm. The Lands Commission says on that document that they are not responsible if you rely on the search oh. and you do a transaction and you suffer a loss. So what you have is that, in essence, you are on your own. But is that not ironical? Because even though they have the information, <laughs> aren't they the custodians of it as it is? Yes, it is, it is, it is partly because, you see, the methods with which we compiled hmm. the right. records right. make the records not very sacrosanct. Okay. So if you don't apply the disclaimer, the Lands Commission is going to open itself hmm. to a concatenation okay. of lawsuits. Right. A chain of lawsuits. Mm. So the Lands Commission is also trying to cover its back. Itself. Right. Okay. But the Lands Commission has been going through major reforms over the last about 15 years. Right. And the land sector itself has been going through these reforms. Now, what will happen is that at the end of these reforms, mm. you could get a record system that are virtually foolproof. Okay. So the Lands Commission can stand on the records it has and say we are giving you this information you can rely on it Very well. we will get there we certainly will yes. but you're walking us through the steps of the ownership so we'll just wrap it up for us. you go in there you check the records at the lands commission if it consists if it is consistent with what you found on the ground hmm. then you have to deal with the person because the records at the lands commission will tell you that this land it's not state land. That's okay. the first thing it will tell you. Right. It will tell you that this land is not state land. Okay. So at least you don't have a challenge with the government. Or sometimes it will tell you the site is not affected by any recorded transactions. Okay. It means that that area in their records, they have no information. Right. That also means you are on your own. In some cases, they will tell you that the site is affected by transaction A, which was recorded on this year. Okay. Transaction B, transaction C, okay. and the transactions will not be consistent. Mm. So at that point also, you are on your own. Mm. So generally speaking, in acquiring land in this country, you are on your own. From beginning to end. From beginning to end, you are on your own. And it is also consistent with the principle caveat and thaw, mm. which is let the buyer beware. Right. In fact, it's the same when you are going to buy a car, isn't mm -hmm. it? It is. So you must have your eyes wide open. Mm. And you can also protect yourself by getting professional support. Right. Now, in this country, we use lawyers and professionals generally mm. by way of what I call the fire brigade approach. Mm. We wait until there is a problem. Yeah. You better consult the professional Before. ahead of making the decision mm. so that your decision is Guided. determined or guided by professional advice. Right. You don't go and make the payment, and when you go to the land and the land guards, <laughs> before you come and say, lawyer, come I, and help I have me. a problem. No. <laughs> anyway, Mr. John, I'd like to say thank you. Time hasn't been enough, but yes. we'll certainly touch on this again. We have been talking about land litigation and disputes, and what every developer, and buyer, or Lisa, whatever you want to call it, should know. Let's so, see. So, let's see. Okay, let's thank see. you for that law lecture the there. But you, the land is the lesser. And, Okay, let's saw and let's see. Let's see. Very well, guys. So we'll touch on this again, talking about litigation of land and how to deal with it. But we'll, that's all we have for you today. We'll see you same time tomorrow, 6 to 9. Johnny and I will be here to give you your favorite breakfast for the day. So have a blessed day. Go out there and be productive. See you tomorrow.